Okay, guys. I'm just going to invite my brother Jason so he can join me. So, guys, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me. I'm going. I've just invite my brother Jason to join me, guys. Uh, not to worry. Thank you, uh, Fiona. God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm just going to be waiting for my brother, who's going to be joining me in a minute. Brother Jason going to be joining me. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your patience, guy. So we're going to be talking about leadership in mission and discipleship as well. And this is going to be another, another challenging topic um, that I pray you guys can join us. You guys can interact. You guys can, um, you know, you can give us your ideas and suggestions. You know, it's all welcome so that we can, we can do what we're supposed to do. Remember, all of this is a teamwork. We're working as a team. We're working as a team, building each other. And uh, I really, really want to thank you uh, for for being with us, for joining us, for those who will be joining us. Uh, thank you. So I'm still waiting for my brother to to join us. Um, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Jason has been uh, is moving to Africa. Uh, just to let you know a little bit about him, he's moving to Africa. He's um, he's been married to God has provided a wife for him, a Ghanaian uh, from Ghana locally, and um, yeah, God is doing amazing, amazing things in his life right now, and he's quite excited. And we're just going to be sharing about it. Um, and don't forget, I think my sister, I'm, I'm, I'm joined with my sister, uh, Medina Chibola tomorrow. And um, I, I, she will be joining me. And I know I will be joined with uh, another sister called um, Carol Buster. So, yes. So, I can't wait to see them all. So, thank you. So, I think my brother is with us now. Hi, brother. Are we, are we on? Okay. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm just trying to click it on uh, to the screen. Yes. So, yeah. God bless. We got, <laughs> yeah, we on, we on, man. We on. I just want to apologize for one or two people will be joining us uh, just because we're slightly a few minutes late. I had an amazing fellowship with Alan and Alice, Alan from America in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just finished. Amen. So it was a blessing. So we have Sister Fiona, who's kind of was inquiring already, thinking, oh, my goodness, are we going to have it tonight? So we're on. Amen. 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 So how are you? How was your day today, brother? It's a nice day, nice relaxing day today, brother, to be honest. Mm -hmm. No, how that's good. How about you, bro? Oh, I spent a few, I spent, I spent a little time with my mother-in-law and, uh, you know, and we took her out a little bit because it was sunny earlier and for once. So absolutely. So we have a few people joining us in our Strong Tower Fellowship. It's running us at the moment, Lita, and, you know, and then says hi. Uh, we have uh, Sister Fiona which I'm sure is going to be joining us as well very soon. So it's all good. So today we're talking about leadership in mission and discipleship. Okay. Is that all right? And this yeah. is part three. Yes. <laughs> amen. 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 So Lord, we thank you for your divine yeah. presence in the Holy Spirit with us, Lord. Yeah. Father, we thank you that you have caused us and provoked us in our spirit to do this, Lord. Father, we thank you that your Holy Spirit is going to flow in and out, in and through us, Lord, so that many can be challenged, so that we can be challenged to change, can be mm. challenged our mindsets to change, to do what you're calling us to do. So because we, 
You call us to go into all the world and preach your gospel. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will provoke us again, rekindle the fire again, that we will go and do what you call us to do, Father, in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, in your word, with your word, not of ourselves, but amen. glorifying you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Shoot. Okay, bro. Uh, three three scriptures just before we start. Uh, Absolutely. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Yeah. And uh, just let me know if you want me or you to read it. Uh, yeah, if you have them, start. I'm just sending a message to Fiona quickly. Let's go, okay. yeah. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled mm -hmm. that they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus, with Jesus. They marveled. Uh, so the other one is um, John uh, chapter 15, uh, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And uh, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away in every branch that beareth fruit. He purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are Whoa. clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branches mm. cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No mm. more can you, except you abide in me. And mm. then, last one, John chapter 6, verse 53. No, I'm going to read that one. <laughs> okay. John, chap John chapter 6. Verse 53 to 58. I was almost at the page. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh and of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Amen. Amen, brother. So this is just introduction before we get into, into it. But uh, there <clears throat> they've been with Jesus. You know, it, yeah. it, it was this lifestyle relationship but also uh, intimate learning from him. Uh, it says, I'm the vine. So you've got to be in Christ. It says, unless you eat of me, it's about mm -hmm. fellowship. So as we, there are lots of things that we could uh, deal with in being a leader. We could talk mm -hmm. about humility, which is important, accountability, yes. which is important. Mm -hmm. There are all these things, but the things that we're going to touch on tonight, that if, if you would let me bring them in, it, it's up to you. Uh, basically, the, these are the inner core things that have to be there. Yes, the sir. outer ones; those are things that you, you know you'll. We might get later to talk about, or yeah. you you might have already. I think you probably expounded it, or we'll go on to expound. But we're going yeah. to go into the inner core of what a leader is, and uh, and and actually, when you look at leaders and pastors and 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 Sunday school workers, youth workers, these principles that we're going to look at are often the ones that are the most important, but yet the most neglected. Um, I hear you. So I hear you because you see, I, I don't even, I want to let you flow because my most important point that I have tonight, I want my people, including us, to realize the characteristics of a leader, a Christian leader, because there's a difference between a worldly secular leader and a true Christian leader. So I want you just let's go, brother. Let's go. Go ahead, my friend. So yes. Uh, so we're thinking about missions, but anywhere, wherever you are, as a, a born again child of God, and and you've been yeah. given some responsibility, we're mm -hmm. all responsible to to reach out to to what when people get converted, they need discipling. So you, these principles mm -hmm. will will help us. But I just want to say to those who are pastors and those who are. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, leading a, a fellowship as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Just hear what was what we're going to share today, because maybe you need to come back to these basic principles in your ministry. Yeah. Um, so, first principle: uh, if we're going to bear fruit in leadership, is I know it says simple, but we 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 lose this that Jesus brings life. Okay, so yeah. if you if you look at John chapter one. Mm -hmm. John chapter 1, uh, yeah. verse 1 and 3. Do you want to read it or me? Absolutely, straight away. So the gospel of John chapter 1, verse 1 and 3. Yeah. 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. And then if you look at verse 4. So, yes, so verse 4. And in him was what? Life. And the life was the light of men. Very so, important. So, so we've seen, uh, Joseph, we've seen, you know, he's the word. He made everything. Now his mm -hmm. life. And then verse 5. I don't know if you want to read it on me. It's yes, absolutely. Verse 5 says, And the light shines in darkness, in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The darkness, the darkness did not comprehend it. And then uh, we won't read these, but in, in John chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, he turns water into what wine. In John yeah. chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, mm -hmm. he says, Anyone who is thirsty, come. In John chapter 6, verse 5 to 13, he is the bread of life. In John chapter 11, he is the resurrection and the life. But the point is, wherever the Lord goes, there's life. Boom. He, bring, he brings life. So yes. the question, if he brings life, is he, if he's the ones that bring life, is he, if he's the light that shines in the darkness, if he's the word, if he's the bread of life, if he says, come if you're thirsty, then your ministry has to be Christ-centered. Uh, and yeah. so often um, people can get taken up with titles, they can get taken up with wanting respect from people. They can get taken up with all sorts of different agendas. But if you're not ministering Christ, if Christ is not at the center, the father delights to hear his son being glorified. The, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is given to glorify the son. So if, if, if you're not ministering life to your people because you're not ministering Christ, then you've missed it. It's very simple, but it's very central. But yet we miss it in ministry. You know what? Life begets life. So yeah. absolutely on point. If we don't minister life, we're ministering death. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Now, if you have life, you will give life. If you don't have life, you will give the other side. And really, truly, if Jesus is in us, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, if Christ is in you, the hope of glory, you will bring life in every place. As I was talking to my friend Alan from Florida a few minutes ago. Mm. You will bring the love of God in every place. The echo of love will continue in every place that you go. Mm. And this is the challenge, brother. There have been many followers of Christ, many people who have been made Christians, but there has not been enough training and equipping in the world of leadership so that they can take responsibility. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. And you know, we we can we. The thing is, is that what I've been in, in Ghana, and what what I've noticed is, I hear this. This is what I hear. Hi, I I am an apostle, and uh, if Title. you uh, yeah, if you uh, listen to me, you will get a visa to America. I have had visas. I have had visas to Australia, Canada, and America. And if you follow. And all I hear is the pastor's talking about themselves. Yes. What happened is the, the Bible is clear. It says that they will make merchandise of people. Okay. Mm. In Peter, it says, you know, the force always has to come and mess about so that the truth can end up. And what happened, you and I, we're going to be going through this journey. You know mm. why? It's going to be painful. And we might, it will feel alone because as you can see, when Jesus came, Mm -hmm. He had to undo the wrong doctrines that were established. He said, you have heard, he says, but I said to you, you have heard, he says, but I said to you. So these people, they come, they mess things so bad, honestly. Mm -hmm. So you and I, we have to come and say, when you come and bring the basic foundation of the gospel, Amen. people think you're talking another language. So absolutely, I, I feel, I hear you, my brother. I hear your compassion. And I'm telling you, brother, you're not alone. We're going to tag team into this because these people have been doing this for a long time over there. And guess what? They have even formed other people to go build, found other churches doing the same thing. And it's going to take a few people like you and me and many more to begin to undo like Jesus had to come and undo the works. Remember one of the one of the scriptures that I, I like in my I, I memorized it in is in 
in 1 John 1, in 1 John 3 verse 8, it says, for this purpose, Christ was manifest to destroy the works oh, of the devil. Oh, oh. And he works in all those people. And that's why the church is not shining the light. That's why we know making disciples and we know making leadership. Come on, go ahead, brother, please. So, you know, it's not about your title. It's not about no. your name. Can, no. can you minister, anybody out there, can you minister without anybody knowing your name? Because everywhere I go in Ghana, everybody wants their name in lights. They want their name. They want the board uh, to be seen. But can you do ministry without your name knowing? And the, the point is this, is that if you're not talking about Christ, lifting up Christ, but you're talking about yourself, that you're only interested in promoting your empire, your ministry, you're not interested in promoting the kingdom, then you've lost what it's all about. It's not. It's all about Jesus Christ. So forget your name, rub your name out, forget the name, and start talking about the greatest of names, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. You know, this is so basic. You know, I want us to hammer home that point. If you get it wrong here, the rest will be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why, because it's not about us, it's about him. Now, why do we say that? Because he said the same thing. He said it wasn't about him, it was about the father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he said, I do nothing except what my father says. And mm. now he said in John 15, apart from me, you can do nothing. So yeah. now, if it's true, it means it's not about my name. I am dead and I'm hidden in Christ. So God yeah. don't see me. God sees Jesus because he took the pain. He took the wrath of God. He took whatever he needed to take. Hallelujah. In my state. So if I bob my head out, you know what I'm saying? That would be a problem. So thank you, brother, that we can come to the place where it's not about a denomination. It's not about a name, uh, somebody's name. It's not about the PhD and the title. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, can you just please allow me to say this? Can mm -hmm. you read the first scripture you read tonight about how they were unlearned. Can you just bring that back for the people who just arrived? Yeah. Acts, I, want, I want to comment on it. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. It says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. This is, this is so simple. I mean, I thank God for Bible's, uh, uh, you, you know, um, you know those universities yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that teaches you about church management and church this and church that. I mean, I thank God for them. There's a lot of good works that's being done there. But mm -hmm. there's something about the encounter of Jesus Christ. Amen. Where Amen. That, that encounter of Jesus Christ, the road of Damascus or whatever Jesus met with you, mm -hmm. that encounter blows. Mm -hmm. Paul can bear witness to that. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. I count everything I know. Mm. rubbish that I may mm. gain mm. the knowledge mm. of Christ mm. Mm. and I'm praying my, my, the reason why I say this brother I want to encourage our people that your encounter with Jesus Christ will be the engine that will take you places Amen. That, because nothing else everything will fall off, building will close PhDs will disappear but that mark of the Lord upon your life will take you places please go ahead my brother Every time you talk, it dovetails it to the next thing I'm going to say. <laughs> so it's good. So yeah. we're talking about lifting up the Lord, and then you you brought it to this encounter that, yeah. you know, you can have a PhD, you can have a title, but at the end of the day, have you had an encounter with the Lord? And they yes. did with Jesus. And that's what yes. we're going to home in on, on now about this importance of the encounter, what you just yeah. shared. I, we, we'll we look at one or two, but I'll mention quite a few. Yes. Um, this is what I want to say next is uh, if we're going to bear fruit in, in ministry, we have to lift up Christ. If we're going to bear fruit in ministry, we have to have an intimate relationship with Christ. And it's what you were saying about the encounter. And this, there's a lot of important reasons why we need this intimacy and why God wants this intimacy with us. So just a few scriptures. If you look at John chapter 3. Yes. Uh, verse 1 to 3. I'm ready. You want me to read it? Why are you yes, preparing please. the other one? Yes, yes. So verse 1 to 3. Yeah. And notice the yeah. name. 
there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night say, and, and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with them. Jesus answered and said to him, hey, hey. Most assuredly, I say to you, you unless your one is born again, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let's go. Amen. And I, I'll just just one more, and then I'll, and then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I'll mention a few, and then we'll which one? Uh, it's John chapter four. Verse 9 to 13, the Samaritan woman. Let's go. John chapter 4, verse 9 to 13. Right. So, then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said, If you knew the gift of God, hallelujah, and who is he who says to you, Give me a drink. You will have asked him and he would have given you living water. And I'll just write off just I won't, we won't read, but I'll just say some scripture so people can write it down. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. the, the man at the pool in John 5, verse 1 mm -hmm. to 15, John 5, mm -hmm. 1 to 15, the man at the pool, the woman caught in sin. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 1 to 11, Mary mm -hmm. and Martha. In John mm -hmm. to 11, uh, verse 17 to 23, and then mm -hmm. John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17, Peter. What is mm -hmm. important there is, is notice that the way the Lord ministers, he wants intimacy with Nicodemus. He wants intimacy yeah. with the Samaritan woman. He wants intimacy with the pool, the guy at the pool. He wants intimacy yes. with, with Peter. And very often in ministry, mm -hmm. We have all sorts of hang-ups in our lives. Some yeah. of us lack, have, have inferiority and we want to be respected. Some of us have a messianic complex. We want to save the world and just show everybody how great we are, right? We have all these issues and we're running around. We're trying to do ministry. We're trying to impress people. We're, we're trying to show everybody how great we are, what, what amazing people we are. But you know what? Do you know what the thing that the Lord wants most of all? He just wants uh, intimacy with you. He wants to. He wants you to know him, that, and, yeah. and, and, and 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 be refreshed in him and walk with him. So you're running around trying to sort everybody's problems. You're running around trying to get a name for yourself. You're running around trying to uh, build your little empire, whatever it is. But the Lord's saying, whoa, 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 just spend a little bit of time with me. Yeah, let me minister and, to you. And that is that is so that is so much needed, brother, because. It's not about how many. It's not. It's not like in the world. It's not numbers related. It's yeah. not. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not about how much you can do. It's about spending time with Him. It's about abiding in Him. And when you abide in Him, it's like recharging. You refuel yourself, and you mm. propel you to another dimension. In fact. The time you spend with him will take you further. Mm, Hallelujah. Mm, oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Go ahead, bro. Go and, ahead. And, and that 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 that's the that's that's the fuel. Without 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 yes. one pastor said, uh, Pastor Wally from Nigeria, he said, minister from the overflow. In yeah. other words, unless you spend time with the Lord and have that intimacy with him, how can you minister? Because you're not ministering in the overflow. But the point yeah. the point is is that we have to be honest we've all ha we all have had issues and we all have issues and yes. we bring that into ministry and we 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 often are striving in ministry in some way we're striving mm -hmm. and we think it's spiritual but actually there are issues in our life that have not been sorted out and we're using ministry but what yeah. we need what the lord wants most of all in our lives is just to know that we're children of god and to yes. relax and enjoy fellowship with him so just take yeah. a chill pill, get some time with the Lord, relax and enjoy being a child of God, and then minister out of that. But if you were so so wanting to be in, uh, like, oh, you've got to call me reverend, uh, you need to call me reverend, or you need to respect my ministry, 
or you need to do what you're told and 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 all these issues then you're missing what it's all about it's all about intimacy with the lord and the lord wants intimacy with you i'm so thankful for africa africa has done <laughs> <laughs> Because I am, I am so, uh, brother, I am so thankful because, and this is what I keep saying to my brothers, I'm praying for people to travel. I'm praying for people to try and get out of the country. They will see something that will rekindle the fire. Because you see, I, I want to tell you something, brother. The reason why I love you, one of the reasons I love you is this. You could have gone to Africa and truly built your own empire. Mm. And having been there a couple of years, you see how you can do it. Because it's easy for you to become popular. It's easy for you to draw the crowd towards you. But it has to be the spirit of God in you that gets so worked up so much that you want to scream. You mm. want to scream. In fact, I like the, the, like the previous message I had with Alan. You want to echo the love of God. You want to echo the gospel of God. You want to echo, mm. you know, the, the, the message of the cross. You know, the echo goes all the way. The echo mm. don't mm. stop in the building. It, the mm. echo goes, you know, uh, Alan was saying to us that the echo is like, as soon as you say you say something, it repeats itself. It just continues. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the spirit of God in you has allowed you to see what's going on. You... You're almost there, I would even say, like a prophet. Because it, this is such a challenging time for you because you're going you're gonna to you're gonna go to the pain of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to go to the pain of mm. the prophets of the old because they went and saw what Israel was doing. They mm. saw injustices. They saw abuse. They saw by the religious leaders. Mm. Mm. You will see an uh, uh, old woman barely with shoes on, you know, taking some money out of the handkerchief, dropping in a thing when they're hungry, when the, the grandchildren can't even go to school and they're coming, hope, hoping that the prayer or the laying of the hands of the prophet oh, 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 oh. will do a miracle. Oh. And that is an amazing thing. So I thank God that you have not been corrupted. I thank God that you stood the time. I thank God you come back rather than compromise as a white person in, in Africa, where anybody can come to you and you, you bribe them with whatever and they become you become popular. But mm. you have decided, brother, I'm sorry if I took time for this. You yeah. have decided to preach Christ and him crucified. I am telling you, the ones and the twos that he will bring to you, praise the Lord. Go Amen. ahead, brother. Amen. I just want to say, if there's any African pastor out there and he's not preaching the gospel, I'm at war with you, bros. <laughs> Because we're preaching Christ crucified and the word of God. Amen. 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 The people who know me, because I'm, I'm going to be going soon, it's yes. like, it's almost, you don't understand it. This is so powerful. I'm about to go and I'm going with my whole family. Yes, yes. Now, the way I'm seeing my children, they can't wait to get there. Mm. And I can see, because last time when I brought my wife, I mean, she almost cried almost every day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I told you when we came back, she said, "Let's sell the house." That that was it. There was no other thing to do. Yeah. And yeah. and this is like you came back to resharpen me a little bit more, sharpen yeah. all the edges of the West. <laughs> <laughs> so no, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm I humbly accept. Now when I go back there, it's like you told me you warned me about everything. I need to go back there knowing what needs to be done. And I thank God for those who are supporting. I thank God that for those who will be continuing to support us. My brother, thank you for coming to sharpen us. Thank you. Go ahead, brother. Af Africa needs Bible teachers. It needs people that are going to systematically teach the word of God. It's the greatest yes. need of the hour. So then she can rise. If Africa could rise in the word of God, she would shake the world. God would shake the world. But it needs some people to go back into Cameroon and Ghana and wherever mm -hmm. and start to teach the word of god and raise a new generation that are going to minister the word of god we pr praise god for the supernatural and that but at the end of the day if there's no teaching then that fire that they have it's not going to go anywhere they need teaching and they need to be inspired by people who will teach so i pray that god will use you brother mightily mm -hmm. in this time and and anybody else who's willing to go and hear the call absolutely 
Absolutely. Thank you. Let's go. Um, Archbishop Temple says, apart from him, I can do nothing. All fruit that I ever bear or can bear comes wholly from his life within me. Apart from him, I can do nothing. All fruit that I even bear or can bear comes wholly from his life within me, Archbishop Temple. So we just looked at Christ brings life. And secondly, mm -hmm. he, demand, he, he wants intimacy with us. And these are the two things that we need to put in place. That will help us grow in humility, accountability. If we haven't got those things in place, everything else is not going to grow or build. Mm -hmm. um, sec secondly, we'll, we'll look at it uh, next, tomorrow or, or another day about yeah. perse persecution, about how to fight in persecution. But I just want to talk about persecution a bit in, yes. in ministry. Mm -hmm. um, William Tyndale uh, translated the Bible in English so that people could read the Bible in English and not Latin. And he was strangled to death. He lived from 1492 to 1538, but the church strangled him to death for translating the Bible in English. John Bunyan wow. was put in prison for preaching the gospel. His wife was blind. He couldn't help his wife because he was in prison, and he was in prison for 12 years. Charles Simeon, an Anglican minister who got converted at Cambridge, was locked out of his own church. For many, many years, he had to sneak in through the back so he could go on to preach. Um, the question is this. Are you a man or are you a mouse? Are you a man or are you a mouse? You know, so many people have said, oh, pastor said this and he hurt me. Or, or I can't do this because somebody's hurt me. And people are all touchy, touchy, feely, feely. And people have to start growing up and be real men and real women of God and realize that. There are brothers and sisters around the world today that are losing their life. And you're moaning because the pastor's hurt you or someone said something. And we've got to man up and toughen up and be ready for the battle. We're going to get persecuted. Some of us are going to lose our lives. So what? Let's man up and get ready for the, for the persecution. Amen. So, um, scriptures, uh, John chapter 15, verse 18 to 25. Yeah. John chapter... Uh, 15 verse 18 to 25. Let's go. Verse 18 to 25. If, if the world will hate you, you know that he hated me before, before he hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember, the word that I said to you, a servant, remember that I, the word that I said to you, a servant is not, a, is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have not sinned. But now they have sinned. They have sinned and also hated both me and my father. But this happen that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in this in their law. They hated me without a cause. Hallelujah. So I'll just just say this, and then there's some scriptures, and then is it okay? Absolutely. Now? Yeah. Um, Leonard, Ravensell, Leonard, Leonard Ravenhill said this, if a Christian is not having tribulation in the world, there's something wrong with him. Mm. If a Christian is not having tribulation in the world, there's something wrong. Uh, there's something wrong. And, you know, if you're going to run the gauntlet, if you're going to step out in faith, you're going to uh, be obedient to the Lord and, and, and serve the Lord in mission, then the enemy is going to come out for you. You're going to get attacked, you know. Yeah. And, and you, you, so you can't go into mission and ministry thinking, 
you know, a lot of people go on three three weeks mission or three months mission to Africa or wherever, and they think it's a nice holiday, meet some nice friends. They come back with a cool T-shirt and say, "Oh, I've been on mission, whatever." You know, and pictures and pictures, and it's all lovely, lovely. And uh, but no, if you if you're the real deal, if you really are for the kingdom and you really want to lift the Lord up and and serve Him, then you'll be persecuted. They persecuted the Lord. They crucified Him. So you're going to get crucified. So you've got to be up for the battle and realize that you're going to get attacked. You're going to get maligned. You're going to, you're going to have all sorts of things. I remember I was uh, running a church one day and the elder of the church, he came into the vestry. I had all my books and he was really nasty to me. He was really, really nasty to me, but I had to smile and be nice. And I was about to preach. I felt like, I wow. felt like shouting at him, but I couldn't because I was about to preach and I, uh, you have to have the spirit of God in you and, and fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace and whatever. But the point is that even your closest friends will stab you in the back. Wow. Even, you know, even your own pastor will stab you in your back. You know, people that you trust will stab you in the back. And sometimes you'll feel so wounded that you want to give up. But guess what? That's part of the that's part of leadership. It's part of the work of God. If you're not willing to get hurt, then don't step out because you're going to get hurt. And you're not only going to get hurt once, you're going to get hurt regularly. People are going to let you down. People that you put trust in are going to let you down. People you give responsibility are going to let you down. People that you looked up to are going to fall into sin. And you're going to think, what's it all about? But you've got to be a person who's willing to be determined to keep going and serve the Lord, no matter what persecution comes your way. Absolutely. It's like that, that said, you cannot look back. You got to move forward. And now everything that happens to you is clear. It happened to Jesus as well. Betrayal, people letting you down, people denying you, people doubting you. All of that will happen to you. But that's what that is training in leadership. That is training in discipleship. This is it because, you know, there's no saying what doesn't kill you. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Strengthening, I don't know how it goes, but this is this is exactly it because the, the training in leadership is not about um going to sit in a, in a classroom somewhere, it's mm. practical, it's on the job training, amen. And the Holy Spirit will be evident in your life as you handle conflict, as you handle issues, your attitude will be shaped on the battleground, amen. Do you, do you want to do you want to? I'll give you a little a laugh. We have these, because the pastors were not interested in training, that God sent us third, like little boys of 13, 12, 13-year-old 13 boys, right? We have three groups around Accra. So I was training them to street preach. So what we do, we get all, all the boys that stand in a line, and I get mm -hmm. one boy to preach in mm -hmm. the church, just, just pretending he was on the street. And we'd all surround him and start pushing him and slapping him while he's preaching and saying, wow. you know, and, and, and getting in his face and shouting at him and calling him names to toughen them up so when they go mm -hmm. on the streets preaching, they can stand it. So there are young boys at the moment, 13-year-old boys, that go around street preaching uh, in, in Accra. But we've toughened them up. I've, I've taught them that they're going to get attacked, they're going to get shouted at. Yeah. But, but in, your, in your own ministry, uh, you've got to realise you're going to have a broken heart very often and you've got to realise that. You can't go into ministry with your eyes closed. It's going to be <laughs> tough. If you if you're the real deal, it's going to be tough. In in John chapter eight fifty nine, John mm -hmm. chapter eight fifty nine, they tried to stone him. In John yeah. chapter nine verse sixteen, the Pharisees were plotting against him. In John chapter eleven verse eight, they wanted to stone him again. In John chapter eleven verse forty seven forty eight, they were plotting against him. Then in John chapter thirteen verse twenty seven and John chapter eighteen verse twenty two, Judas stabbed him in the back. And betrayed him with 30 pieces of silver. In John chapter 19, 15, the people who he ministered to, the crowds, they turned on him. In John chapter wow. 19, verse 1, they whipped him. And in John chapter 19, verse 34, they crucified him. So Thomas Watson, the Puritan, says, Religion will cost us the tear of repentance and the blood of persecution. Religion will cost us the tears of repentance and the blood of persecution. You've got to be willing to lay down your life. Some of you may be called to die literally on the mission field. Are you willing for that? I'm willing. I'm willing for them to chop my hands off. 
I'm willing them to set me on fire. I don't care. I'm going to preach the gospel, to preach the word of God, come what may. Are you willing to pay the price? End of story. Wow. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's one of those, you know how Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, he said, if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you're not fit to be his disciple. Mm -hmm. And this is it. And the, the thing about it is, the question you ask is so powerful. Are you willing? That's, that's all God is asking us today. Are we willing? Mm -hmm. Do we Are we willing to move from our comfort? Are we willing to move? Are we willing to step up? Are we willing to be uh, spat at? Are we willing, like those young boys are training, are we willing? Because now, if we are willing, God will work in us. In Everybody has a different way that God will work with them. Mm -hmm. What happened to the other one don't have to happen to you. But if you are willing, God will make sure you stand. If you're willing, God will make sure he sustains and maintains you. Mm. It's, it's, it's not about being scared. It's about trusting in the Lord in all your ways, no mm. matter what. What we have done, my brother, this, this really hurts me sometimes. What we have done is we are using the word of God mm. for our comfortable life. And then what happened? It's very subtle. It's very, very subtle and very deceiving. So what we're trying to do is that I use the word of God for my little issues in my little life, which is my centered life. I want my life to be better. So mm. I take the word of God and I use it so I can be better in this life. Mm. But it had nothing to do with that. It's to do with the service of God. When you are serving him, when you are on the job for him, like mm. Jesus said, I must be after my father's business. The more you do, the word of God will empower you and equip you to shine the light of God in the world, in the work mm, of God. Mm, mm. You see, now people have taken the word of God. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I have a backache. Oh, Lord, your, your, your word says by your strap, I'm healed. You know, mm. it's, got, it's got nothing <laughs> to do with that. Honestly. It gets me because I'm thinking, all right, okay, I know that's it means that that's where they are at. But Lord, wake them up. Mm, mm, mm. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Some people might say, no, 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 suffering's not for me. Let's just turn to um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 yeah. to 16. You, 1 see, Peter. you see, as we turn to it, one, one of the challenges is that you're right. Most people, because they learn from America, suffering does not belong to you. Poverty don't belong to you. They have all these things that Jesus wasn't poor and this one wasn't poor. He died so we can become rich and all of that. And you know what we do? Because what the enemy has really, really twisted the minds of people so much. What happened, brother, is this. Because we, we, we think like that, we're making the word of God boy. Mm, 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 mm. We're making subtly, we don't even realize it. We're making the word of God voice. So we become so defensive and so protective. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah and yeah. it's like we, 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 my house, me and myself, and my, you know, you just become like that. Mm, so mm. when the Bible says, don't forget to entertain stranger, oh, no, 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 COVID, or I don't know why. why <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know what you're saying it. Oh. I know what you're saying, bro. Yeah, it, go ahead. Go ahead. You want Peter? Th this is anybody who says suffering is not for them. Yeah. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice mm -hmm. inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, yeah. that when this glory shall be revealed, you'll you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For yeah. the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. And on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody mm -hmm. in others' matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So this proves 
that Christians go through trials. If they lift up the Lord, they will go through fiery trials and suffering. Amen. Amen. Uh, you see, it's, it's absolutely, it's, you know, if we're following Jesus, the call to discipleship is the call to dying to self. Mm -hmm. And these things will happen. And what, whatever, I, you know, I said to my people sometimes, your enemy or mm -hmm. adversity is the best situation to, to, to die, to kill whatever doesn't look like Jesus in you. Mm -hmm. Because your, your enemies will bring either the worst of you or the best in Christ for you, you see? Yeah, yeah Because yeah, it's yeah. hard that when people are stoning you, that you say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Don't charge yeah, this. Yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's hard for somebody putting a nail on your hands and putting another nail on, and you go, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Your, the adversity will prove your character. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, really, I really wanted to say that because I want our people to know don't try and protect yourself so much that you think, oh, no, this, no. Be free in the Lord Jesus Christ and watch what he will do for you. Because suffering is part of growth in Christianity. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, mm -hmm. brother, please. So, so we've looked at uh, lifting Christ because he's the one that brings life. Intimacy yeah. with God, mm -hmm. that, that he wants intimacy with us. Mm -hmm. And then we've looked at going through the pain barrier that we've got to realize that we don't go into ministry just thinking it's going to be nicey, nicey, feely, feely. No. You know, it, it's it's it, those who are real. The deal is tough. Mm -hmm. uh, so just man up on that. And then next one, um, being a, a preacher and a teacher in gospel ministry. What is it as teachers and preachers? What what are we actually uh, trying to do? So I want to um, say this. But before we preach and teach. Before we preach and teach, we have to do it with our life first. Yeah. So before we have a message, before we start preaching and teaching, it's got to be demonstrated in our lives. So if you go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 yeah. to 35. Be before we go there, I just want to thank God for the most the, the comments that's coming in. Um, you know, I have a Fiona say, abiding in abiding in him, surely this should this should diminish us. So we begin to die and he starts mm. to live in us through us. Absolutely. Uh, we have a, you know, Sister Karen approving. We have Brother Georgie approving what we're talking about. Uh, we have Billy Bryan uh, greeting us from Uganda. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. We have a, um, a, it's a, another person. We have a, a Sister Fiona saying, wow, just wow, you know. But somehow, not surprising, we have uh, uh, another one saying, yes, what, it's a battle. Karen say, yes, it's a battle, absolutely. Uh, Karen's from Durham. Um, Fiona say, yes, what a battle, basically. We often don't want the level of battle. It's like, so you can see that this ha it has to be spoken because we have to say this, that people are encouraged. So they know that it will happen. So be prepared. It might not happen. That's fine. But be prepared. Being willing is enough for God to use you for what he wants you to do. Go ahead. Just, just. So we were, the we're, scripture. We're, we're going to, pr uh, about, pre but before we preach and teach, uh, before we say anything, we've got to live it. But just to come back to that persecution, uh, Adonai Judson, who was a, a Baptist missionary, went to Burma. He mm -hmm. was hung upside down on bamboo sticks in prison for two years. To, and now there are Baptist churches all across Burma, you know. Uh, David Brainard was kicked out of college because he said his college president had, uh, did not have the Holy Spirit in him, so his college president kicked him out. And he went to be. So he went and got on a horseback, and he just went and was a missionary to the Indian, the, the, the Indians in, in there, you know. William Carey, his wife went crazy. And chased him round, round his house with a knife as a as a as a missionary. Um, you know, John Patton. John Patton went to New Hebrides. Uh, they 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 wanted to eat him. They wanted to eat him. They, he was living in fear every day. They were trying to eat the, eat him. You know, uh, mm -hmm. he lost two wives on the mission field. Uh, Jim Elliot went to the uh, went to the 
South America to the Orca Indians there. They killed him when he got there. Off and 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 is Elizabeth Elliot still alive today? Right. So so people have gone before and they've suffered for the gospel. You know, William Tyndale translated the Bible. They strangled him to death. Yeah. You know. I like, I like the one. Not that I, I like the one who said the president of the university didn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is it. That's the boldness that the Holy Spirit gives you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Please. So, so give you all, step out for the Lord and, and let God use you in your generation. Amen. But, but, but remember, those who are praying that you want to be used, remember, you're only going to get, the more used you get is the more God will break you. Amen. Because Amen. he cannot give his glory to another. Yes. So if you are going to be really used of God, you're going to have to be broken. Yes. So the greater revival you pray, oh, God, use me for Africa, use me for India, whatever, the greater the crushing you're going to get because everything has to come out about Jesus, not you. So Amen. The persecution is part of God molding you for his work, as brother has said. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. And, and that, is the, that is the secret lesson that most pastors, most leaders don't learn. Yeah. The ones who are really of the Holy Spirit have been through the, 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 the wrecking machine of God where he, 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 he cuts your pride down <laughs> to the point where you say, Lord, I can't take it no more. Take the knife off me. But it, you said you wanted to be used of revival. Yes, I did, Lord. But stop cutting me down. I can't take it. But he cuts you down and breaks you so that he can make you. Moses was in the desert for 40 years. He had to be learned to nothing to be something. So Imagine Moses, Moses, Moses had to say he can't even speak anymore. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so, so the more you want to be used of God, the more he's going to break you. But when he breaks yeah. you, he wants to make you. He wants to use yeah. you, you know. So, yeah. so just be careful what you pray. You want to yeah. be used mightily, you're going to have to be crushed mightily. So yeah. there's nothing pray. with you. Pray anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And, and somebody might say, oh, yes, I know all about this. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Because you, you don't want to go through it. Because it's not, it's not a nice yeah. experience, but it's a necessary experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, so uh, if we could turn to Ephesians 5, 25, 35, brother. Amen. I turn to it quickly. So, five twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah, it's Ephesians five twenty-five to thirty-five. It's about practical yeah. Christianity, really. About how, how we... so Ephesians five twenty-five. Husbands, right? Yeah, yeah. Husband, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for her, that He might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church no having spot or wrinkle of any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish well, up to which verse as long as you want uh, it's up to you you want to read any more or less it's up to you plus no because this is that that point is very powerful wrinkles you know how you know how the wrinkle comes out of a t-shirt or clothes, you have to yeah. pr uh, press heat, <laughs> pressure and heat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so the fire. <laughs> Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. This, this is it. Go ahead, my friend. Go ahead. So the, the, next, point the, is, next... the point is this. Those who are publicly preaching and teaching, mm -hmm. it, it's our lifers. We, 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 we teach by our life. Jesus, he said they've been with Jesus. It wasn't yes. just that he was teaching them. They were actually observing his life. Seeing yeah. how he was living, see, seeing what he was doing. So they've been with Jesus. It was teaching mm -hmm. and the, the life. And our life has to be the real deal. So it's no good being a preacher or mm -hmm. a teacher if you're not loving your wife, you're not loving your husband. If, if there's no love there, what's the point of people saying, oh, he's a great preacher or he's a great teacher, but you're not showing any love. There are many pastors today, many leaders today, that treat their wives appallingly. They don't treat them with love. They don't give them time. It's so easy to be busy and neglect your wife. Buy your wife some chocolates every now and again. Take her out for a meal. 
And same, same with the women, with the husbands. Maybe you're busy in ministry doing whatever you're doing, but you're neglecting your husband. That's not right. It begins at the home. It begins how you treat your children. It begins how you treat your, your husband or your wife. And, and a lot of people use ministry to hide from family issues. But it's at the home is your mission field. It's the home where you, you, you're you showing Christ first. So when you get in the pulpit or when you're teaching, it, it's got some reality behind it. So all of us have to improve and, and continue to work on our life before we start teaching or preaching. And we're often, we have blind spots and, and issues in our life and we have to have the humility to be corrected by our peers, by, by our wives or our, by our husbands and, and be willing to grow and not think, oh, I'm a teacher. I know best, but maybe there's blind, well, there are blind spots in me. And my wife puts her finger on it. If I, am I going to turn around and say, I'm a teacher, I know best? Or am I going to say, no, wait a minute. Mm, yeah, all right. And it's so easy to have pride and not listen to yeah. people, not listen to your, your spouses. So all I'm saying is, well, what's your life like at home? What's your life like with people? Well, on the, on the same page that you were talking about, Ephesians chapter 5, Yeah, he says... Verse 28, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who, yeah. loves, he who loves his wife loves himself. So the opposite is true. Now, I, I, this is not even part of our talk. How would you deal with a pastors that the majority are divorcing from their wives? They're divorcing, mm -hmm. separating. There's a lot of single pastors today. When mm -hmm. the criteria says, no, PhD, the criteria says he must be a ruler of his own house first. Mm. Mm. Uh, one wife with the children. Basically, your life at home, mm. God can qualifies you by your life at home, how you bring your family. So now, if you don't have that, brother, I don't know what's, mm. what's happening. I that, That's what I'm saying. It we, This is a net, ministry... Being a leader is about character. Say it, brother. And, and it's not about your qualifications or your gifts. It, it, yeah. If you look at all the qualifications of what it is to be a leader, 99% is character. It's your mm. character. And you show your character at home. You show what you're like at home. If your character is mm -hmm. what it is at home, that's what you are mm -hmm. in public. You might try mm -hmm. to hide it, but that's what you are. Mm -hmm. So... It's no good pretending. We have to be real. But a yeah. lot of a lot of people in ministry that go into ministry use ministry to hide from their own demons and their own issues. Mm -hmm. But they put those demons and issues onto the family. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if 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 I've been controlled by my father, and then I get into ministry, I want to control people. It's because wow. I've got an issue about being controlled. So I. I control my family, I control my wife, I manipulate my wife because I have this issue. Rather than saying, wait a minute, no, I've got to deal with my demons. I've got to ask the Lord to deal with my demons, my, my wow. issues, treat my wife in a humble, gracious way. And, and then mm -hmm. I can go into ministry and be humble and gracious. But that's just one example of how many psychological issues that we have. We take it into ministry and then yeah. we put it on our wives or on our spouses. So, for example, another one is... Um, Low self-esteem, you yeah. know, maybe you need respect and you want your wife to respect and you want everybody to respect you. So you, you demand that your wife speak to you in a certain way. That's you bringing it in. No, she needs to be talked to with respect. You need to show her respect. You need to wow. show her love. And uh, maybe maybe we, we weren't loved when we were children. We've mm -hmm. come into ministry and we want love. And mm -hmm. so for some strange reason, you don't give your wife love, but... Everybody else in the church, you give them love because you want to hear that you're loved, but you're not realizing you're neglecting your wife. Wow. So there are all these issues that we have, but we, get, we, we deal with those demons uh, not in, in, in a practical way by allowing that intimacy with Christ, allowing being intimate with Christ. The Holy Spirit, using the word of God, deals with our issues, and we mm -hmm. start to minister to Christ to our children and to our, our wives. I know I've seen your children. Uh, God has used you to do that. And and I, I pray that I have children <laughs> like you, brother. Amen, uh, amen. But, 
but all I'm saying is that we have to be honest with ourselves. Don't, many of us have failed. I know I've failed, but uh, but I want to be that real person at home before I begin to preach, and uh, we have yeah. to grow, and we have to be yeah. willing. If if yeah. if 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 uh, Joseph sees me and says, "Jay, the way you spoke to Dorcas, the way you've said this, I have to be accountable." Yeah, we have to be accountable. In you our see, home. I have um, there one of my favorite scripture with the family is in one Timothy chapter five verse eight. It talks about if anyone does not prov provide for his own family, he's worse than an unbeliever. Provide love, provide time, provide care, provide everything spiritual leadership if you yeah. can't do that to your own family you're worse than a non-believer i mean that is a terrible indictment to anybody aspiring to be anywhere i.e even in leadership and for mm -hmm. me what you tolerate now you cannot rebuke later so we need to be sharp in our own families god will give us the grace we're not talking about this is not natural this is supernatural god is supernatural we do, I just want to encourage my people. God will give us the grace to do what he's mm -hmm. calling us to do because we can't do it by ourselves. Yeah, but we yeah, need to be yeah. willing to submit and obey and practice that even among ourselves as brethren because this is it. God tests us in our trials and tribulation so that we can now know how to submit. The way I, I deal with my wife, I need to understand woman because I'm the bride of Christ. I need to understand leadership because I have a leader, Christ. I need to understand headship. I need to understand all of that. And that's why we have all of this, uh, you know, the head of Christ is God, the head of the man is Christ, and on and on and on, so that we can learn how to submit. You mentioned it at the beginning. In a, a, a Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, we are to have the mind of Christ. He mm -hmm. humbled himself. You don't want God to humble you. No, he will humiliate you. You want to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. And God will make sure there are circumstances and brothers and sisters will help you and the Holy Spirit to humble yourself. Brother, continue, man. I, I'm, I'm just enjoying this. We have a, let's go another 10 minutes. Okay. I want to give you more of those, th those 10 minutes to, to give all the scriptures that you need because people need to know we're not giving our opinion. Go ahead, bro. So, so as the Lord to work in you in your own uh, private life uh, and that great passage in 1, Cor uh, 1 Corinthians 13 if you have not love you're nothing love is patient love is kind you know Amen. Um, and and just to say those who've been in ministry a long long time mm -hmm. to, to just ask you you've been in ministry a long long time where is it at with your family because mm -hmm. you go back and you're probably neglecting your family because you're so busy and those who are just starting in ministry what's your motive for starting ministry is yes. it because you want people to love you is it because you want to prove something or mm -hmm. or what because those motives are affecting your family if you if you want to be if you want people to uh be impressed by you and you're busy busy because mm -hmm. you want to be impressive to people then that's neglecting you you're going to be neglecting your children and your family so have a motive for, for love for your family and then Hallelujah. and then we need to, what is, we live it, but what are we actually preaching? What is the main teaching that, that we're, we're actually doing uh, in, as a Bible preacher and teacher? John 15, 27. John 15, 27. Thank you. I'm almost there. So he says, And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So he says, and you also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So pre preaching and teaching is to bear witness to the gospel. Yes. Ev ev everything, all the practicalities of how we live the life, mm -hmm. it all comes out of the gospel. You know, Paul's letters are really an, an exposition of the gospel. Romans, the book of Romans, we're justified by faith, Romans chapter 3. But then he works it out. How does it work out in our experience? How does it work out in our family, in our nation? Uh, our relationship to Christ, Ephesians mm -hmm. talks about the first three chapters, as you know, is about how, who we are in Christ. The second three chapters is about practicalities, how it works out in the church, how it works out in family. So we're gospel people. If you don't understand that leadership is gospel leadership, then you're going to get sidetracked. It's not, it's not first gifts. 
It's not first uh, even uh, building a ministry. My identity is I'm a gospel servant. I'm a servant of the gospel. I'm bringing good news to people. That's my Amen. identity. And if you if you don't have that, you'll you'll get sidetracked with, oh, my identity is my PhD. My identity is I'm a Pentecostal minister or my identity is I'm a Calvinist minister. No, my identity is I'm a gospel servant. I'm there to preach the kingdom of God. I'm there to lift up Christ, to get people into the kingdom, to get them saved and then to train them so that they can go and live the life that God has called them and serve God as God has called them. And if Amen. we don't have that gospel work, then everything else will fall apart. That has to be at the heart. Just look at this. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3, verse 4, 5. Cursed is anyone who preaches not the gospel. Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3 talks about justified by faith in Christ. Uh, Amen. Philippians chapter 1, it talks about uh, people are preaching a false falsely for, for, to, for their own selves but he he has fellowship in the gospel with them and so mm -hmm. everywhere you look with paul he's is a gospel man uh romans chapter 1 verse 16 i'm not ashamed of what the gospel for it is the power of god unto salvation one come on one corinthian sorry bro no come on come on come on come on. Yeah. one corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 24 we preach christ crucified so unless the crucifixion is preached Unless the resurrection is preached. Often, I asked one student, I was lecturing uh, to some students, and I was preaching on the cross. I, did, I wrote a course out called The Cross Course to try and drum it into them about the importance of the cross. And one guy said to me, uh, so, so uh, should we preach the, the cross like once a month? I said, no. once a month? I said, it's the, <laughs> you're preaching all the time, brother, to get people saved, to ground them in the, in the word of God. You lift up the blood all the yeah. time. So unless we focus on the blood, unless we focus on the resurrection, unless we focus on them, there'll be no converts. There will just be secularism creeping in the church. It's the gospel that has the power of salvation. And that's where the gifts will flow. The church will grow when they understand the gospel and its implications for them in their life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, absolutely, bro. If, if you have any more, because I wanted to just say if I can insert this, a leader is someone who unites people. And guides them towards the goal. And the goal is God in Christ Jesus. So mm. everywhere we go as leaders, that's what we have to do. The cross is the center message of the gospel. The, mm. the, without a cross, our gospel is void because the gospel is that power. That was the power is. And without that, anything that we do. So as leaders, what we have to do is to make sure we lead by our lives, our lifestyles that we live by examples, basically, and that when we speak, we speak as the oracles of God, not mm -hmm. of man. We need to be, because one of the things that is so amazingly powerful, we are speaking the word of the creator of universe. Mm -hmm. We are not speaking the word of somebody neighbors or anything. We are speaking on behalf of God to the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How serious should that be? Yeah, when, yeah. I, when I handle the word of God, that you said somebody was strangled just to translate it for me. When I handle the word of God, what, what comes into my mind? Mm -hmm. Am I speaking about the creator of universe who can just, and I disappear. He can just do this and I disappear. Do we realize, I mean, it comes back to the fear of God. It comes back to that divine encounter because I believe we, the reason why we wishy-washy is because we have lost sight mm, mm. of the fear of God. We have lost sight mm, mm, of the mm. power of God. We have lost sight of what God can do. We think God has changed. You see, mm, we mm. think he's not like the God of the Old Testament anymore. You think mm. that thing, God has a heart transplant. No, God mm. is the same. Jesus mm. is the same. The mm. method may have changed, but he is the same God. And he's mm. a fearful God. Go ahead, brother. So, so brother, that, that, that we preach the gospel like you were saying. We preach Christ crucified, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. Our ministry is a ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation mm -hmm. means we're, that you are under the wrath of God if you do not get reconciled through Christ. And Amen. that wrath has been dealt with through the blood of Christ. Thank so you. We're, we're ministers of reconciliation. And so we, we live it. And we preach the true gospel that is Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. And then 
we cannot do it in our own strength. We have to do it no. in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. There is an anointing. There is a special anointing, by the way, for those who are preaching and teaching. There is, a, there, there is what is called the sacred anointing. The old Pentecostal minister, the old preachers, they mm -hmm. used to, if they felt that, that there was a blockage, they would get together and the elders would pray for the anointing. And when you teach, when you're preaching, there will be an anointing. If you if you are called of God, God will anoint you. It's an anointing that you can't manufacture. It's an anointing that you can't, that the spirit of God is sovereign. But if you are faithful, if you lift up the Lord in your teaching, the spirit of God will anoint you and, mm -hmm. and, and, will, and, and he will come down sometimes in, in power. So uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. So we're, 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 we're strong on Bible teaching. We want solid Bible teaching, but we don't want dead orthodoxy. We want living orthodoxy, sound teaching, but it has to be alive. So it's no good telling me you're the Calvinist, but you, you're so dead that nobody's listening to you. You need the power of the Holy Spirit upon your ministry. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, bro. Thank you. 1 Thessalonians, hallelujah. Chapter 1, verse 5, yeah? Yeah, bro, yeah. Excellent. So, it says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power, amen, and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. Hallelujah. There is a sacred anointing, and God will only mm -hmm. give that anointing if he can trust you with it. Mm -hmm. If you can't be trusted with it, you won't have that anointing. There's nothing you can do to get mm -hmm. it. It's sovereign. And mm -hmm. he comes when he wants, and he will anoint the teacher or the preacher as he see fit. But have That's expectancy. When Spurgeon got into the pulpit to preach, every time he got into the pulpit, he would pray in his breath. This is what he would pray as he walked into the pulpit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. So when he got up to preach, he was expectant that the Holy Spirit would do his work through the word of God. So believe mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. Believe that he will honor his word. Have faith mm -hmm. that he will mm -hmm. honor his word and expect the Holy Spirit to work. And, and sometimes, as past, as Pastor will know, sometimes... It might be quiet. You might be quiet, and and it might oh, yeah. be a still, still. Mm -hmm. Sometimes oh, yeah. it might be thunder and lightning, but allow the Holy Spirit to to come down mm -hmm. as He see fits and on, on the Word of God. But expect Amen. the anointing if you're faithful and true. Absolutely. Another thing that I want to insert is to be diligent. You see, in yeah. John fourteen verse fifteen, it says, "If you love me, keep my commandments." One of the challenges in leadership is that we're not consistent enough and we're not methodical, we're not diligent enough. So it's, it's really important for us to know that a character of a disciple, a leadership, leadership and discipleship is by getting the discipline to be diligent servant of God. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that there's lack of consult consistency. You know, when I was starting these lives uh, last year, mm -hmm. one of the challenges I always had is uh, people ask me, they said it's too much, you're doing too much and you're doing too this. I said, this time that I spend with you, like one hour or yeah. so, yeah. I said, I, you know what? I could have spent that time praying. I could have spent that time watching tele. I could have spent that time being on the phone with a friend. But spending this time live and then the, uh, the challenge was always, oh, how long are you going to be doing this for? How long? And I'm thinking, why people can't understand this is food. Mm -hmm. I am being built up by talking about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I am being built up by learning from other people. Mm -hmm. And the best way to be built up is to have the fellowship. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard because people need, people are used to set, you know, we spend eight to nine hours working for the world. Mm -hmm. But you spend an hour a day talking about Jesus to the world, people think you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christians, Christian things you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we need diligence. We need to be consistent. We mm -hmm. need to continue. Honestly, thank you very much. Keep keep going. Let's, let's do another five minutes if that's okay with you. 
Okay, brother. I'm going to I'm going to read uh, John MacArthur, if that's all right, on, on this. Absolutely. As a, as a conclusion. My old man. <laughs> he, he says this. According to scripture, virtually everything that truly qualifies a person for leadership is directly related to character. It's not about mm -hmm. style, status, mm -hmm. personal charisma, clout, or worldly measurements of success. Integrity is the main issue that makes the difference between a good leader and a bad one. Amen. Amen. I don't know what, what you think of that, bro. No, he, one of the things, you, you see, you will know them. He just expanding with what Jesus said. You will know them by their fruit. Mm -hmm. You see, if that's all that is. It's not about how you deliver. It's about like the, the what, what, which one you said you were saying, uh, I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Would you? Spurgeon. Absolutely. Because for us, the word was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Mm. You see, Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, you know, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Mm. So for, mm. for me, the Holy Spirit moved the leaders and the preachers to speak the word of God. Mm. And I believe as we abide in him, we bear fruit. My brother, we cannot go wrong. In him, we will be corrected. In him, we'll be chastised because mm. we're children. In him, we will bear fruit. And because we abide, he will do that. So I want to thank you, my brother. Absolutely. John MacArthur, I've been following him for a long time, almost 10 years, I would say. He expands the word of God. Absolutely, teacher. And I will advise, you know, there's a, there's a few of them in America that are still sound. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And one of them is, is John MacArthur that I, I really pray that people can follow. Another one is called uh, Douglas. Uh, I forgot the, the other name. Doug. And another one who is fiery. I know you know him. Um, ah, he we, he served with John John MacArthur as well. He he's been to missions as well. Absolutely, I I, I know Phil you Johnson, probably know him. Phil Johnson or Steve Steve Lawson or no Johnson worked with John MacArthur. It's another one. He's in a, a, a cry hard cry ministry something like oh, that. Oh, Paul Washer. Paul absolutely, Washer. <laughs> absolutely. There's still a few that are good. There's still a few, and there's mm. him. There's Paul Washer. There's John MacArthur. And there is a, there's quite a few. So, yes, absolutely. Let's stand. Let's do what we can do, what God can do with us in this area, my brother. And I, th I want to thank God for Karen and Fiona and everybody who will be watching this video. I thank you guys and girls for your patience. Tomorrow we meet again at 9 o'clock. I want to thank you. Share the video. Do what you know to do. But more importantly, like Jason, my brother, said, we let, let's allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, to strengthen us, to prepare us like the bride so that we can stand without spot or wrinkle. And whatever he wants to take us, he will take us, but we will go in the power of God. Hallelujah. My brother, you want to close in prayer for us, please? Yeah. Father, we come before you and we're weak vessels, Lord, but yeah. as we hand our lives to you today, Lord, we take our weakness and take our lives, Lord, and just may they be used for your glory. So, Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters tonight. We pray for Joseph and his family, and we pray for each one that all of us might be true disciples. And that, Lord, the responsibility of leadership, that we would all live according to your word and be filled with your Holy Spirit, Lord. So we just commit tonight to you. We commit this video to you. We pray that it will be a blessing to many and strengthen people. And we pray that this series, that you will continue to bless it in Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, these three are one. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Thank you, Angela. Thank you so much. Thank you, all of you. May God bless you and have a blessed night. Hallelujah. Amen, brother. I'll speak to you tomorrow, brother. Thank you. All right. God bless you, brother. Bye-bye.